I don't like that it's October 13th. Friday the 13th. That's the last time you can sing that. I know. You're actually... Did you guys know that you legally are not allowed to sing August by Taylor Swift after uh, August... uh, September 1st. It's against the rules. Yeah. You can start singing it on August 1st, and the last day to sing it is August 31st. You can't sing it. (laughs) And if you do... I don't know. We don't make the rules, unfortunately. <laughs> Take it up with the big guy, okay? <laughs> not me. Also, <laughs> since it is... Se- no, it's not September 1st. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but since it's about to be September 1st, I am going... Did you just bust in my room? Like, when did this happen? Charlie just... Charlie? Infiltrated, yes. Aw. Okay, girl. Join. She's, like, all up in the courts. I have a fall candle <gasps> that I'm going to light. It's um, oh. pumpkin apple. I literally Fun. stock up on fall candles. I check daily if bath and body works is having their ooh asmr <laughs> their <laughs> candle sale like where the candles are like 12 bucks and when they do i go in there and i buy so many of them because i Aww. burn them 24 7 this is so, so fun so i'm like pumpkin apple today if only you got, do you do you think there's going to be a point in the future where like you can smell through the youtube video <laughs> um possibly i would like to hope so i, I don't would like I to hope that we would live in a world where that would be a thing i just got one i got the um Pumpkin, not pumpkin, marshmallow fireside. I just got that one. I love that one. I, I always, it and, um, Isaac always takes that one for me. Like, cause we have fall candles at his house because I also do the same exact thing in Bloomington where I'll go to Bath and Body Works and buy a bunch of candles. And he always takes the marshmallow fireside one and lights it in his mm-hmm. room, which it yeah. is a more manly scent. Chris loves also, those sweet candles, the vanilla pumpkin. Oh, oh I wish. Isaac literally <laughs> only likes the like super manly smelling smells. Oh, and really? I'm, like, this is the Chris, worst, actually. He loves all the, the sweet And it gives ones. me a headache. Yeah, I don't so like, so like cologne-smelling candles no. like that, you know. Um, also, off topic, but I do want to put a little disclaimer out there for those of you audio listeners. I am trying to figure out the audio issue, so I'm going through trials and tribulations with this. So I know you guys hate when I use this microphone because you guys can hear if like I move around with my hands and I'm trying not to move around with my hands, but like these type of microphones, there's not like a stand for them like there is with my other microphone. So I'm just seeing if the audio problem is with the podcast recorder or if it's with the microphone, that way I can get a new microphone to put on the stand. So just please stick with me here. Give us some time. Please. I'm this trying to figure it out. out. I understand it's like very annoying. And thank you guys for suffering through the last episode, as a lot of you said in the comments, but I don't know. I'm trying to trial and tribulations it out. That way this is a pleasurable experience for everybody. So I'm trying, and I hope this one fixes it, and I'll just have to order a new microphone because everybody hates this one. So <laughs> <laughs> We shall see what happens. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, welcome back to Bookmarked. Oh, yeah, welcome why. back. Didn't I don't know why that. I just put on a country accent. Oh. Okay, well, she's a little sweet Southern Belle American girl. <laughs> um, but welcome back. This is the podcast where if you are watching virtually – virtually visually my laundry pile grows bigger and bigger with every single week that we pass that one right there i'm calling attention to it because it's just right in my face it's just hold on oh I'm trying to look oh yeah <laughs> oh my god i didn't even see it until you moved wow it looks like an it's art piece <laughs> <laughs> it's because like my closet is like barely any room to like walk inside of it so it's very hard for me to like organize in there so every time I get oh the thought of putting clothes up makes me so mad but mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to do it this weekend so it will be gone by the next episode hopefully but um what have we been up to anything are we gonna talk about our dotes what's going on yeah we do dotes I, I haven't been up to literally anything since last time we talked just working I'm trying to think <laughs> working gal just working just a working gal yeah the I think because the, the end of the month in. End of the month into beginning of the month, I feel yeah. like it's the busiest. Yeah, you've been slaying with the uploads recently. So thank you. I don't know. You're a busy working gal. Thank you. I don't know what happened. I, I have like more to upload too. I think I took like a week. Well, I filmed a lot and I had all that footage, so I've just yeah. been editing a lot. So now they're all like accumulating into like uploads, and I didn't realize yeah. how much I was uploading because I was filming for so long. So I felt like it's been a while. But I don't yeah. know. I think I paced it out a little interesting this month i didn't really plan it very well 
it's yeah. okay i never plan it literally if you guys yeah. <laughs> i don't have an upload schedule even like in my mind because some youtubers are like i don't have an upload schedule like in their mind they like to post like on a certain day at a certain time mm -hmm. i literally will either like edit a video and as soon as that thing's done processing i post it or like i'll edit a video send it over to a brand and literally as soon as they tell me that it's good i yeah, will post go it. and post it like i don't have any thoughts and i wish no i was thoughts. like that. i don't know why in my head i feel like i have to do it at, like a specific not like really specific days but like specific times and stuff but it's never like i don't have a set time in my head it's just like, like after like i don't know 7 p.m i'm like eh, i'll post tomorrow morning you know it's like i'm in bed yeah. <laughs> i'll do it in the morning even like see i'll post it. at nine because yeah. i used to do that but i feel like it's because you're stuck on like your time zone but when you think about it like even if we think like oh it's only five i'll post it's like 3 a.m for somebody else yeah like, it's not like it's kind of hard to like keep yeah, anyone could be watching exactly yeah, but really what's your that. what's your drink of the episode My, i've been waiting to open it <laughs> it's so oh. random because okay. i stopped i didn't want to get coffee today because i think i'm i mean they're making my sh myself think i'm yeah. anxious over it but it's never like when i'm drinking it it's like hours later i'm like oh it was the coffee like you know when you get anxious and you just blame it on something i oh, always yeah. blame it on coffee even though i don't know if it is coffee but i went downstairs i was like maybe i have a little drink i could bring up instead of water and in my um my fridge i had these little mini apple juice bottles oh that is little so cute apple juice. <laughs> i think you know when you go to target and you like randomly have like an impulse to buy something i think it's like a universal yeah. experience yeah i bought a six pack of these little apple juices and i haven't drank any yet but there's like two gone my brother was just home so i think he's been getting into my stuff again um but i'm gonna open this and i'm so excited oh i'm gosh, waiting to drink so it. excited <laughs> crack that thing open girl i yeah. love that sarah's impulse buy from target is like a six pack of mom's <laughs> apple juice and mine is like impulse buying the entire store and blacking out and realizing that i just spent three hundred dollars that's my impulse buy <laughs> no, i don't know why time. i wanted um this juice box i used to drink these juice boxes growing up my stepsister had them and like put me on them and when we were so young we had like three a day they're like the sips you ever heard of sips juice boxes no but oh let me look up my the god i had them when i was younger and I, they weren't at target i wanted them and then i got apple juice i don't know it was just like you know when you're like feeling something i was in the mood no, for like when you're feeling it you should buy it mm -hmm. and i never choose apple did juice you, when i'm choosing a juice did you ever have like an elementary school say your teacher was like throwing a party or like a kid brought in cupcakes for their birthday did people do that at your school too yeah yeah and then when you, we were young yeah but now you can't do that like i can't go to like my niece's school and do that which is like understandable because like really <laughs> but you, you can't bring food in gonna, no you like, can't bring like, like you can't do that anymore like for you oh. can't bring in like cupcakes but did you or like your teacher was doing like an ice cream or pizza day and you had the little barrels um of the juice they're they look oh, like barrels yeah yeah i don't think I, yeah i don't think i ever drank them but i know what you're talking about no yeah i will like during the summertime specifically i always pass those in like walmart or meyer and mm -hmm. i'm always like i want to buy those and say they're for my niece but they're really for me because i'm like really <laughs> no, childish. Buy them. <laughs> but um no now it's fall listen <laughs> this is coming out on august 31st but it is fall okay now i'm not gonna argue is, with you on this no look do, do you guys notice something I changed the color of my microphone to orange because oh. I am fully in fall mode. Okay. I've been trying to hold back. I've been trying to like keep <laughs> Let us have whatever. the end of summer. Like I'm like, you know what? August is not fall. It's not like I'll give the girlies their moment. September is when fall starts, even though it doesn't feel like fall here in Indiana, but it starts in my brain. And so I plan on before i think it did i literally i think i said this in the last podcast episode but i leave for like a family vacation here in like a week or two but before that i'm going to deep clean my room and then decorate it for fall and i'm gonna come home and i'm gonna mm -hmm. be like you know what we're full on fall mode i don't care if it's 90 degrees outside i'm going to put on my sweaters i've been buying so many fall clothes like it's actually not i okay. love fall clothes wait what is it still like 90s over there it's like, literally it about feel to fall be at in all? 90 degrees. Because today, right now, wait till I tell you how much it is right now outside. Oh it's 66 and it's gloomy <gasps> and the leaves are coloring. <laughs> Stop. Indiana, like, does not. So this is the thing about living in Indiana because it's the mid Midwest. <laughs> Midwest. And um, sh throwback to when me, Sarah, <laughs> and Haley first ever hung out. And <gasps> it, they were both like, I thought you were from the South. I, I was did, like, I, I don't know why Indiana in my head was a southern state. No, Sarah I don't know this where like, the states are. No, Sarah was like, oh yeah, so you're like from the south. And I was like, 
nope live in the midwest and she was like I think it's the accent too yeah which indy to be fair though it's like indiana ohio then you have kentucky tennessee alabama like right underneath yeah. us, so it can be a little in my head bit. you're still southern i just literally my brain can't process that you're not <laughs> south <laughs> it's okay my family's southern so we'll just call me southern okay but like for example like right now it's 60 degrees outside and i was just outside running to starbucks so i was like okay whatever um tomorrow well it's gonna be 78 it's gonna be the high so it's still like pretty whatever then the whole entire next week 84 89 90 91 <gasps> 90 90 80, no 40, way 80, 82. yeah oh you're literally. still in in summer no. indiana's because not letting go no indiana doesn't let go of summer so we never we have like maybe two weeks of prime fall weather then it turns freezing cold mm-hmm. and then when it's winter time doesn't want to let go of winter doesn't oh, yeah. want to let us That's have like, like a spring moment and then it just That's goes directly into the heat that's why fall is such like a bittersweet little little season because it, it's, no. it's fleeting. It does not yes. last very long. No, and I you wish... You have to hold on to it. <laughs> I wish fall was like winter where it just lasts way too long. So I long. wish it was. Brutally long. I just... Oh, anyway, but my uh, dough is not a fall drink. It's just my white mocha, by the way, guys. I've been getting... When I did get coffee, I've, I've been putting the pumpkin cold foam on top of literally really? anything. <laughs> Do you like the pumpkin cold foam? Yeah, I do like it. I don't um, like it as much as like pumpkin flavor from Dunkin'. I think the pump, the Dunkin' pumpkin spice, they just do it so well. <laughs> you know what? I'm Here's serious. we're articulating an idea because how I already said that we're gonna do when me and Sarah are together because I'm coming down in October. Mm-hmm. When me and Sarah are together, I was like, we should try the Starbucks fall drinks. You know, what we should do add upon this. <gasps> Do I both. go get the Starbucks fall drinks. You go get the Dunkin' fall drinks, and we put them head to head. I think that's a really them. good idea. That's like a perfect idea. I don't know if pump- Dunkin' has as, as many as Starbucks does. They have the but nutty we can just pumpkin. Still try them. If you haven't tried the nutty pumpkin, so good. It's hazelnut and pumpkin like together. Oh my god, it's so good. But you can also like look up those combinations of the drinks too. Like people yeah. like put them together and like make yeah. fall drinks because that's the same thing at Starbucks. Oh, that's like, so fun. I will admit that when the PSL came out last Monday, the 24th, I was so excited and I was like, my mom was like, oh, she saw it all over, whatever. And she was like, do you want to go get a pump spice latte? Because I was also having a terrible day and I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll go get one. <laughs> um, two things happened to me. First of all, I went on the app and I was like so sure because I don't know why the app lets you order a hot drink and then put cold foam on it because like that's just not even a thing. Oh, and so I ordered a hot pumpkin spice latte. So I went in there to get it and then I was like, oh, they made it hot. And then I went and looked <gasps> at my like order and I was like, no, yeah. I ordered it hot. That's I the walk worst. out almost in tears because you know, like it's not about the drink. Like it, yeah, I'm not like, crying over drink. Hot. It's because I was already having like a crappy mm-hmm. day to the point where like that just like pushes you over the edge. That was the you know, last things just make you snap. And my mom was like, the, the line basically wrapped around the building. So I was like, whatever, let's just go home. She's like, no, we'll just wait in the line. Like my mom's a literal doll. Like as she can tell when I'm on the verge of like having a big breakdown. This happened to me the other day. We can talk about this too. And I've been having a lot of them recently, guys. <laughs> just bad, bad, bad times. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go try one. She, we order it, iced pumpkin spice latte with vanilla cold foam. I don't do the pumpkin cold foam. I feel like that might be too much. Pumpkin spice latte with pumpkin cold foam. Yeah. That's a lot, you know? That's fair, yeah. And I, and I don't love pumpkin things. I don't love pumpkin right, yes, things. That's, that's I also thought that when we're down there, I don't know if for a pod vlog segment or just fun, we could go to Trader Joe's and try their fall pumpkin <gasps> stuff. Yeah, I'm going to have to Trader Joe's in today. so long. No, but I don't ever go to Trader Joe's because it's far from my house, but thought about that because I was watching a girl say how to romanticize fall the other day, literally while yeah, I was Yeah, they editing. have so much yeah, fall-themed no. stuff. And I thought that would be good. I'm not a pumpkin girly, though, so I was like, pumpkin cold foam, pumpkin spice latte, I feel like that's a little bit too much, I'm going to do it. I take four sips of it, and I do this every single year where i think maybe my taste palette has changed it hasn't by the way <laughs> no literally poured i just yeah. poured one out poured oh, one out for so the because it was just like i can't i don't know what it is if it's like so artificial i don't know i just can't yeah. do the pumpkin spice all day i can't do it I don't, the only hot drink i'll, I'll drink f- is like a well, either hot chocolate but like i'll drink like a vanilla chai tea oh my god a hot chai is really really good See, I haven't tried a hot chai, but the other day in the video that's coming out today, later, 
um i did a video and then for the video i was like oh let's get a fun drink so i tried the like uh chai pumpkin i think it's just like a chai iced chai tea latte with the pumpkin cold foam and i see mm-hmm. people put brown sugar in it so i did that y'all that drink tastes like fall in a cup <laughs> yeah Literally. i feel like chai if you were like, going to like a pumpkin patch an apple orchard kind of carved pumpkins that's like the drink you need to get oh my god go. when you're here like right by my house there's the there's an orchard and there's like this little place and they sell like pies and homemade donuts and stuff and we can go pumpkin and apple picking oh my we should do that we should like paint pumpkins no because I, so sarah fun. doesn't know this but i have a whole entire itinerary of oh. That we're gonna do. <laughs> oh you're already planned oh okay no, that's fine <laughs> no we're gonna no we're gonna go do that but i'm saying like just you buckle up and wait because <laughs> we got the fall activities she's gonna out. have me booked and busy no literally i'm like hey club bus another <laughs> club another club that's like a tiktok audio that you love to i love reference. I so that's it's funny really that it hits for a it. lot of different scenarios yeah yeah no yeah you're you're completely right um so <laughs> basically the essence of this story was that i i try so hard to be the pumpkin spice latte girly like mm-hmm. when you were like younger like high school middle school and you know like because Okay, what grade, were, if you can remember, recall, what grade were you in in, like, the Tumblr 2014-2015 era? Freshman? Okay. Eighth grade into freshman, probably? Yeah. So That feels right. You know, like, back then, like, <laughs> it's so funny that I say back then, hey, literally, trends come back without us even knowing it, because <laughs> the basic white girl is what the thing was called. Ugg boots, pumpkin spice latte, oh, yeah. like that was all over Pinterest and Tumblr. What are those girls called? Autumn girls? What are they called? Christian girl uh, autumn. <laughs> Christian girl <laughs> autumn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was like the it thanked in the fall to like have your Uggs on, your oh, yeah. sweater dress with your pumpkin spice latte back in like the Tumblr era. Hey, 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 still, we're, hey, we're still, back. Still, <laughs> it's, it's back. And I just remember it's like been engraved in my brain since then because like I have said so many times on this podcast, I feel like. I was just so into the Tumblr, Pinterest era in like 2014, 2015, 2012, 2013 as well. Hey, let's not leave those years out. Mm-hmm. And I just was like, when I'm a teenager, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to drink them pumpkin spice lattes with my Uggs. And I can't, it almost makes me so sad that I am just like, sorry, younger Des, hate it. Can't do the pumpkin spice latte. Can't do and it. And that's okay. It could stay yeah. as an aesthetic. You don't have to drink it. <laughs> I just get it as an aesthetic. It's an, <laughs> it's a... <laughs> just holding it around i haven't tried the apple crisp i haven't tried some of the other fall drinks yet though so yeah i haven't tried any of the other ones i don't know if i'm gonna like that but one i guess we'll find out but like I yeah don't, i guess we'll find out i love drinks like that you'll never know but also did you see where like that was trending around the people were using on tiktok the tumblr girls song by g easy did you ever listen to that song no what song is it you know, where it's like, I'm in love with these Tumblr girls. I'm no, honest. I don't think I even know that song. <laughs> it's like, it was like, it was the thing back in the Tumblr era, but people were using that song on TikTok like last week and they were using it to like romanticize like that era. And they were like putting and posting pictures of like the like the it girl room back in that time was like you had the twinkly lights um the pictures like all over the wall like you just cut out the pictures and put them on your wall the like nikki and gabby on the tv the alicia marie and it, i genuinely guys last week i was like in a depressive hole because i was like i miss that time and era so much and like instagram you could only post one picture and it was yeah. all squared and you used yeah. the instagram filters and people were just very posting. limited like even how girls posted back then too it was like i just yeah. miss it i even got a tiktok the other day of someone putting up like a 2014 like christmas aesthetic and they put like a bethany moda video and like how christmas was like the the vibe of it back then and i was like why do i want christmas now how (laughs) i'm going a little too far ahead oh no that was literally me no that's literally me right now because my mom the other day she was like my mom loves summer and then she loves like the christmas time and so she doesn't like to like wish away summer like anytime i start getting excited for fall in august she's like can you just not can you just not like whatever and i'm always like um what so i have her excited for fall and then the other day she walks into my room and i'm watching somebody's vlog miss and i was like i just need to (laughs) slow down like i can't like start romanticizing fall in august and then it comes to october before it's even halloween i'm thinking about christmas like no i'm not gonna let myself do that it's because we think about it like so far in advance and then it comes so quick and then it's over and then we're like now now literally what do we look forward to no that's what i mean 
I think it's also because like you said it's like the, the moments are so fleeting so I like to have months to like really romanticize them oh really romanticize yeah, then it feels them. like those seasons longer like since we're talking about fall right now it'll feel exactly. a little longer you have to prepare and for the season exactly that's what that's exactly right I love to romanticize the season so I've been yeah. watching vlogmas <laughs> <laughs> I wish there was like vlogmas but for fall fallmas fall nope falltober no. vlogtober Vlog- y'all don't have me vlogtober in do not have me vlogtober in yeah i feel like that would work you could <laughs> listen start it do it i'm sure that that's like not even an original thought just like for what oh was yeah it called? someone's probably done that god was that last year that me and you what? were texting about um book miss remember yeah i what was were we saying? Yeah, we d- I think it was because I think last year was the first book miss I did. Yeah. Yes, it was last year. This was like me and Sarah would text sometimes. <laughs> and Aww. I remember being at Target and Sarah was texting me. And she was like, because I think what it was was like I did the first 12 days every day for the first 12 days of December yeah. because I was like, after that, I'm still going to upload, but I don't want to like worry about doing it closer to Christmas. I would rather like yeah, get it out of the way. Yeah, I think I did the last the last yeah. 10 right before yeah. Christmas or something you did like closer to Christmas and so you were texting me because I was like posting and you were like hey so like how are you doing with this because like <laughs> I'm scared and I remember like us having like a full-blown <laughs> conversation about it and I remember like you did the blindly rapping TBR video and you were talking about mm. how people were mad at you for doing oh my god still, people still like comment about my rapping skills it's so funny <laughs> I will never I can, rap on camera again <laughs> no it's just engraved in my brain because that's what it reminds <laughs> me of like saying vlogtober reminds me of when we were doing doing book miss because yeah i thought that book miss was like set like here's the thing i'll be like oh this is such an original idea and do zero research to see if somebody's done it before. oh yeah you know because like thinking of an idea you think you're like it's such a, like an original and you just think no, you're so yeah. like creative for it but then yes. once you search like one you search it one time there's oh yeah videos on it all over the place no literally yeah. And you're so you're proud when, of yourself for thinking of it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened with Bookmas. I was like, oh yeah, it's like Vlogmas with books, Bookmas. Duh, Booktube's been a long, been around literally forever. You think that yeah. somebody hasn't thought of that. But maybe somebody's already came up with a Vlogtober. Let me know down it's, below. I feel like it's already a thing. I'm like, <laughs> I think I need to start planning Bookmas. Like what days I want to do yeah, it. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. Like I... I like lose sleep over it sometimes. I'll like randomly start thinking about like, oh my God, we got a plan. Cause like uploading every day, I don't know. I get nervous. <laughs> yeah, I planned on maybe, cause I thought I was thinking about that because really like, like you said, we're in fall, but having to pre-film videos and just like, you have to think about that. Yeah, it's the pre-filming cause you're fil- pre-filming while you're filming for yes. what you're doing now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I thought about maybe just being like, hey, there won't be as many uploads in November, but that's because there's going to be like 12 days in a row of yeah. content. So just like pick and choose, you know? Like, yeah, I feel like now I need to, I, I don't know what days I want to do in December because I didn't like doing the last few. Because I, I used the first few the, weeks. I would recommend the <laughs> 1 through 12 because I did it because yeah. it's like, you know, the 12 days of Christmas song. Yeah. So it makes sense. And then also because like you, your last day is the 12th of December. And yeah. then after that, you get like the whole entire rest of the days yeah, to just, just upload if you want. relax yeah. and a- upload if you want. I did it because I had like the first few weeks of December to continue filming. But then it was like nearing Christmas and I was like still editing and stuff. And I feel like I Christmas break, you know, so maybe I yeah. won't do the first few days. But also it's hard, though, too, because you have to think that was like the first time that we had like done something like that. Because, well, when I was in high school, I used to try to do Vlogmas and that never, ever worked out for me. I don't but, remember if I tried um, to do that or not. It was like, before. yeah, I tried to do, oh my God, I've tried to do Vlogmas so many times and it just like never works out for me. <laughs> it's difficult. It is difficult because it's like, it's the turnaround of it because I feel like, like with Bookmas, you have to start doing it in like in preparation too because you don't want the quality of the video to suffer because of the quantity that you're uploading. Yeah. So I feel like it's the same thing with Vlogmas where it's like, well, some people just like, slap all the footage together and upload it which is fine because that's just like your editing style but for me i like (coughs) try to do more editing so it feels like whatever and i feel like if i did vlogmas and the turnaround had to be quick i just would be scared for the quality of the content because of that it's like if we're doing like reading vlogs and stuff we legit like we gotta read those books so you have to like plan out when you want to read them and stuff well and you don't want the rating of the book to suffer because you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself and like you don't feel like reading right now but you have to because a video has to go up you know like I feel like that like I'm kind of at a crossroads with the 24-hour reading straight 
video mm-hmm. like how i used to do that all the time because yeah. when i was thinking back on it because i a video that i filmed this yesterday while well, i was doing it for the past two days where i did uh 24 hours but it wasn't 24 hours straight well this is difficult to explain it was like i started at one and it ended at one the next day but i was still like sleeping and mm-hmm. didn't like count that away i just wanted to see like genuinely if we go from one o'clock here to one yeah, o'clock we'll the next things. day how many books yeah. can i read realistically like i wanted to make it realistic like still going to sleep how many books can i read mm-hmm. if i just like dedicate a day to reading and so that video will be up like in a few days but the 24 hour straight thing i feel like when i was doing that and not allowing myself like a break or like to sleep i feel like the ratings of the book suffered because it was like i don't feel like reading right now like i'm just annoyed that i have to do this video so you're like annoyed yeah. with the book even though it's not bad well there's yeah there's a difference between like forcing yourself to read the book than like wanting to read yeah the book. and that's what i feel like those videos can sometimes do because i understand that that's like the one that people like more because it's like it's more entertaining i get it it's more entertaining yeah, you're keeping like, yourself somebody up stay up but i just feel like it's so unfair sometimes for the books and sometimes a, a book's just a bad book but it's like it's just unfair to yeah kind of do that to the book I feel like so. unless you have like a spark to want to stay up for 24 hours yes. and don't force yourself because like sometimes That's we want to like see 24 hours fall but like if you want to like go to sleep and stuff you're gonna have to do that you're still a person yeah hey yeah you gotta go to bed hey still a person so that's what i did the (laughs) other day because i was like i don't think i can do the 24 hours straight anymore i'm not saying i would never do it again but like it would have to be like that on a whim where either like i'm with somebody and like you can you know whatever like keep each other up or if it was like i can't sleep so we're just gonna do 24 hour readathon yeah but that was um that's the random uh, book concert that's been going on. And guess what? Guess update? what tomorrow is, guys? September 1st? <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that what you were going to say? Yeah. But guess, oh. what, <laughs> guess what happened September 1st? What happened September 1st? I'm off my book buying ban. Oh, my God. Wait. <laughs> how did i forget oh wait i'm like sweating now i'm so excited i Hold looked on. at sarah i was like guess what more she's like no i Bessie. literally oh my god wait hold on i'm kind of jealous that i'm not gonna be there with you while you go book shopping oh my god i'm gonna go ham. i want like a play-by-play of what you're doing. Go ham. do you have any like top books you want to get oh yeah i literally have like what's on the top on phone. well because i just got the the new releases and i feel like that's probably top right like oh a Hawthorne God, Brothers. Absolutely the, oh, see, I didn't know that that released. Well, actually, we are going to get to talking about that here in a second. Oh, guys. Yeah. I literally compiled, if you've looked at our Notion, I have links for today's um, talking links. points. She has links. And a PowerPoint presentation for the new what? releases. Yeah. <laughs> Destiny made a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah. We'll talk about that in a sec. Okay. I have the books that I yes, want to so buy. what are the top books? Well, first of all, I think because I'm obviously going to be doing a video and one of them is going to be like book shopping, like going into a bookstore. And then, of mm-hmm. course, there's like other books that bookstores don't carry. So I'm going to do like an Amazon unboxing part two. Mm-hmm. Um, Yay. So oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so excited. But my top sit here and wait for that contender oh, bookstore after a ban. I've been working on this. Hey, I've been <laughs> working on this since I put myself on the book buying ban. Just to let everybody know. Day you after. You did such an amazing job. I literally can't believe it. And I think what, I'll tell you guys what fueled me was all of the comments and DMs that I would get checking me and kind of borderline being rude to me if I was even caught into a bookstore. Hey yeah, guys. it's like, God forbid, now, now you break it. <laughs> no, like, hey guys, I have anxiety and sometimes things that calm me down are just walking around a bookstore. Like I just like the aura of being in there and the vibe. Sometimes I just go to a bookstore to like calm down. It like fueled me, and I have learned yeah. my lesson. I will never like publicly state that I'm going on a book buying ban. <laughs> like, it's personal knowledge. It's now. just no like, and I honestly okay because I got comments like this, and I had the same exact thought process. But it was more of like the book buying ban wasn't because oh I'm buying too many books because I don't really care about buying too many books because I want to collect all of them and I want to have them forever and I want mm-hmm. to have my own personal library and to have a library you have to have a thousand books I think okay. I is think it it's a thousand, thousand, thousand or three hundred nope not three hundred it's a thousand it's a thousand I think it's a thousand yeah yeah 
and not that I'm like, let me go buy as many books to get 2,000, but I would like to have that one day, so I like to collect yeah. books, yada, yada, yada. That wasn't why I went on a book buying ban. I went on a book buying ban because it was more of a like, let me not focus on buying books right now. Let me focus on shrinking my TBR as much as I can in these months. Like, that's what it was really about, was like, let me focus on reading some of these books instead of going out and buying more. Mm-hmm. And so, I think it's just, because putting yourself in a book buying ban, like, I probably would when I will probably buy the amount of books that I would have bought over the span of months in a short period of time. Yeah, but you just did it, but you did it for yourself and you had like a span where you had self-control not to buy books and you did an amazing job. Yeah, and it was about, like I said, it was just about let me just try to focus on the TBR for these few months instead of like going out and buying more books and putting those to the back. So um, I think that maybe I'll just like cap myself some months and be like, hey, only like three books this month, babe. Yeah, give yourself like a limit. Go out and buy a bunch, yeah. But anyway, so this was like this is so funny because this is from so long ago the first one i ever put on here was the prison healer because i saw people talking about that on tiktok oh and really read it. i did i'm about to read and, the third one but now i'm scared because in your video you were like oh this is so slow but like the end gets really good and you know no, like, one books do that i know but it, it really makes up for it because then you like question your life basically because it really oh, God. It, it's really good i feel like it's a good fall fall read no yeah it is it's good um then i have don't you have this book one dark window yeah i just read that one is it good yeah it's good it's definitely a fall book it's like a gothic fantasy oh okay it gives fall vibes okay okay then i had Mistborn by brandon sanderson because i want to like try a brandon sanderson book um okay i also wanted to try the percy jackson series so i wrote that Aww. down um some of these oh the stars are dying that's a fantasy book that i really want and i remember you talking about that one Yes. Um, and then I had To Shape a Dragon's Breath and A Broken Blade. I'm pretty sure those are both fantasy books that have dragons in them. Oh. And I also have just like all of the new releases on my radar. And there's so many more. I think it's like all over my notion. I have books spread out everywhere, but I am so excited to go book shopping. I think I'm going to go. Um, I posted the reel and TikTok about the book that the bookstore that we found in Bloomington. Yeah, that was so cute. Oh my gosh, it's literally, because where Isaac lives, the mall is literally right around the corner from his house. When I mean right around the corner, it's a two-minute drive. Mm -hmm. And so, it's right by the mall. The bookstore is right by the mall, too. So, the bookstore is literally like five minutes away from the house. And so, it's like, I didn't know. So, (laughs) I don't really listen to Isaac, because I just feel like he doesn't know what he's talking about. So, he was telling me, he was like, oh, this bookstore... (laughs) (laughs) he was like this bookstore keeps on popping up on the map like you should go to it and i just thought like no you know what i mean i just feel like it's not what you're thinking it is like i just feel like it's not and then i was in the store and this amazing girl if you're listening to the podcast she comes up to me and she's like oh my god i saw you out in the whatever i wanted to say hi and i was like hi we were talking and she was like you should go to morgan stearns it's right around the corner and i was like oh i've never heard of that so then I forced Isaac to go with me and he was like, this is the bookstore I was trying to tell you to come to for the <laughs> past like, You should months. have listened to me. I know. And it is the <laughs> cute, it's an indie bookstore. So you're supporting a local bookstore, which oh, their book selection is like, it's literally like a Barnes and Noble book selection, but even better because they also have mm-hmm. indie authors. Oh, this is so fun. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm no, fine. literally. No, literally. <laughs> and they also have the cutest cafe on the inside. So it Aww. literally is like a Barnes and Noble, but a local indie bookstore edition. Oh, I love that so much. So that's where I'm going to go book shopping instead of Barnes. Oh, perfect. I'm going to support a local bookstore. Yay. And um, especially since I'm going to be down in Bloomington this weekend. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go on Amazon and buy like the books that they don't have in store. But I'm going to try mm-hmm. to buy as many as I can, like physically supporting a local bookstore. Are you going to buy Powerless by Lauren Roberts? Yes, I am. I was literally about to tell you that. <laughs> I wanted you to say that book. I'm like waiting. <laughs> Because of you, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I was like, it was in the back of my mind, like, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to order that. And then I saw a girl on TikTok, like, raving about it, like, absolutely raving about it. And I was like, okay, I'll read it. Oh, you saw I feel me like this live, is- live reacting. Yes. You have to And get I feel it. like it was literally for a second. I was like, did Sarah tell this girl to, like, send this onto my free page? Because it? it's working. <laughs> and i was yeah. like yeah so i am going to do that Yay. but i'm so excited um, oh my gosh this is not the right episode okay um do you have anything that's going on with you 
that you want to talk about? No, I'm really upset, though, because the other day, so Alice Feeney's new book came out. If you want to yeah. add that one to your list, too. Oh, yeah. What's it about? <laughs> like pitching all these books. Oh, wait. No, I um, remember you told me it's like the mom and the daughter. The, yeah, the her child goes like gets stolen or missing in like the grocery store and then she's like trying to find it and all this stuff trying to um, find it try to find it no <laughs> i forgot if it was like, a girl or a boy hold on that was like the whole point of the story um <laughs> I just, the thought of sorry Sarah to the child. child she's like yeah the the kitty is missing and like the mom's trying to find it <laughs> cool. oh my god um no, but so she was on like her little publication tour, so she went around. <laughs> she's going like a, like five or six different places, but she wasn't coming over here, and I was so upset. But she put on her Instagram post and, like the caption. She was like, "On publication day, before I start, like I'm gonna be in the city for like an hour at this bookstore, or whatever." And like I was, it was like a few days away after she posted that, and I was so mad because I had so much work to do. And it was like one of those days I literally couldn't take off to go to the city, but she was only there, and it like wasn't part of the tour. And I'm literally like having guilt that I didn't go because she lives in like Australia. Like she doesn't do this often. You and I'm so go? upset I didn't go. No. Oh, my God. You should have dropped well, everything and went. Me trying to make when you I was even scared to go by myself because Chris was yeah. working. Lauren li- works in the city, but, like, she couldn't, like, meet me there. And I'm, like, scared because it's not in, like, the part of the city that I know because it wasn't at, like, the Barnes. It was, like, a random, like, thriller mystery bookstore, like, specific to that genre. And I was so upset because she was posting pictures and stuff. And oh, she was so close to me. Yeah. So I'm a little upset about that. Aww. I'm so sorry. I would have flew down. I would have flew down there and went with Thank you. Thank you. I wish you could have. And then Lucy Score, I think, is coming soon. But I couldn't. I can't go to that one either. I'm a little upset about that too. But oh. I did. Things are looking up. I did get Stephanie Garber in October. Oh my God! Wait, should I check what date that is? Imagine you're here. She's gonna be at the okay. Barnes for Curse for True Love. I just want to let you know that you were talking about lucy score and you're like yeah but things are looking at because i did get and then i was literally like if she looks me in the face oh the arc <laughs> no. sorry, she got the arc <laughs> oh my god i would never i would if they ask me and they say hey you want the arc i say if you don't give us a destiny two, i don't want it work this this one arc becomes a package deal if i read about lucian she reads about lucian no literally because but at this point i mean we'll talk about it here in a second <laughs> at this point at this point it hurts actually <laughs> to see someone else live your dream wait, wait hold on i'm trying to find out the date oh okay she'll be here october out oh, the 24th oh mm-hmm. wait october 23rd one of those days well, she's gonna be with, what um, comes out is the 24th Oh, so she made the day before, and she's going to be with Chloe Gong, who I want to read one of her these books Final before Delights. I go. I think Rachel it's, just read... Is it These Violent Delights? Is that what yeah, she what, Yeah, These Violent Delights. Yeah. I want to read one of her books before before I head over there. Yeah. So That's as you should. And that, that's Ooh. all my updates. I haven't done anything else. Well, I haven't been doing anything either. It's just I have a lot of thoughts circulating in my brain, so I'm sorry for talking so long, guys, but... If you want, we can dive into our new. Yeah, let me look at this. Where should I go? To talking about the Notion thing. link. Where am I? Uh, where am I looking? Go to the Notion, and then it's episode fifteen. Oh my god, we're on our fifteenth episode. Yes, we're on our fifteenth episode. This is this is crazy. Okay, all releases. Oh, you did chronological order. You were going yes. research. But wow. if you click the link that's at the top book releases excited for doing oh my god <laughs> destiny <laughs> <laughs> this is so cute <gasps> no you didn't and oh my god and the the summaries too <laughs> wait this is the cutest thing i've ever so seen i'm gonna post this on our instagram just the whole slide <laughs> we're gonna go through these let me try to screen record hold on this is so cute okay i'm not gonna go through all of them though i want to be present with our presentation Oh my god, I can't believe okay. you did that. Let this is our star student. It's not working. Can you still see me? Do you want me to do it? Yeah, I can see you. Okay, I was just making sure you can see me because I can't see you. <laughs> um, if you're okay, watching yes. on video, you so, can see a really, really, really cute. I'll post some of the slides on Instagram, but yes, it's really, really cute. It's adorable. So if you guys aren't following the bookmarked pod Instagram, first of all, what are you doing? Because if you're following, then you would be able to participate in things like this. So Sarah posted yesterday and she was like, hey, 
there's a lot of releases hey. coming out. What are you <laughs> excited for? Let us know. I went through all of the responses. I put them in chronological order. We're going to talk about them. We're going to read some of the, um, hey, descriptions? What's it called? Yeah, summaries? Yeah. Of a summaries. Plot, plot summaries. <laughs> Literal, actual footage of me trying to think through something is scary, but um, <laughs> some of them I didn't include because they're either like smack dab in the middle of a series or like it's like a series that, you know, you, we can't say the plot because it's a spoiler. So, mm-hmm. but I have them all in order and some of them are for 2024, but I thought, why not talk about the 2024 releases? Yeah. You know, so much like, to look we forward can talk to. about them. So that's what we're going to do. So... We have our little excited, excited for 2024 Wait, releases. Don't know why I Let said that. My phone. We have our book releases. Okay. So first up, we have The Brothers Hawthorne. So this is the new companion series to the Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Um, I have this, it. You have, Sarah has it in physical copy, ladies and gentlemen. I had it. So this the, one. When did it come out? The 29th? Was that yesterday? It came out the 29th. Yeah, I went to Barnes that day. I actually wasn't going for this, but I went and I got it, and they had the purple one, which was so fun, because I know they have a black one, which I low-key wanted the black one, but the purple's cute. Yeah, that's the one that I have on the PowerPoint. The black one? Yeah, I wanted the black, the black one. one. I think it like kind of like, looks cuter, but it's okay. I have ice in my mouth. <laughs> I don't know what to do. But this is part of the Inheritance Game series, but she came out with this one, and it's the brother's point of view and i thought she was giving all the brothers a chance with the point of view but i was flipping through and i think it's only grayson and jameson who are like the two main brothers in the first in the series but xander and nash are my favorite brothers <laughs> and they're not like why the main are they ones. hey it's literally called the brothers hawthorne why can't That's all the I'm brothers saying. hold on okay. yeah because the back of it says it just says grayson hawthorne and then like his little description then jameson and listen Xander and Nash deserve their spotlight. I hope she said she's coming out with one after this, so I'm hoping maybe we'll we can convince her. Hey, put them in. I'm just so when this was like first announced, of course I was excited, but I was just a little confused because I thought like we ended the Inheritance Games trilogy on like a pretty clear line, you know? Yeah, there was like a whole epilogue of like what, whatever, you know. So after. I'm like I'm gonna read this and I'm excited because especially after reading the Naturals, I was like, oh yeah, I really like Jennifer Lynn Barnes. But, like, I don't, I don't think it's at the top of my TBR because if we read the plot summary, it says, four brothers, two missions, one explosive read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. Okay. Grayson Hawthorne's raise is the, is it the heir? Yeah, the, the heir? The heir apparent to his yeah. billion grandfather. Yes. Taught from the cradle to put family first. Now the great Tobias Hawthorne is dead and his family disinherited. But some lessons linger when Grayson's half-sisters find themselves in trouble. Half-sisters? Yeah, yeah. Well, because don't they all... Well, I don't want to say anything, actually. Yeah. I guess I don't remember We don't know who these people are. (laughs) This is is a surprise. I'm just so confused. Uh, It's been a while since I've read. Um, He swoops in to do what he does best, take care of the problem efficiently. Hey, by the way, I forgot which one's Grayson and which one's... um, Grayson's like the... Is he the only one? I was team Jameson with Avery, but I like Grayson's character. Do you know what I'm I'm trying to say? Grayson's the older one, Jameson's the younger one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So Grayson swoops in to do what he does best, take care of his half-sisters. Jameson is a risk taker. That should have told me everything I know. A sensation seeker, a player of games. When his mysterious father appears and asks for a favor, Jameson can't resist the challenge. Now he must infiltrate London's most exclusive underground gambling club. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it's just like a new little riddle task for them to go on, right? It's probably oh, going to yeah. be that, but like now everyone's involved. I don't know. Oh, it's see, not so what it I says, expected it to be. It says Grayson and Jameson, with the help of their brothers and the girl who inherited their grandfather's fortune. Okay, just call her the girl who inherited it. <laughs> <laughs> not in, like you know, uh, must dig deep to decide. So what it seems like, honestly, why is this kind of giving me like the Naturals vibe? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like a little mystery. Like has yeah. to save someone. Yeah, maybe she was in the and, Naturals mindset, but she was like, I have to write about the Hawthorns. I don't, I don't know. know. It's not what I expected, but I'm still going to yeah, read it. 
it's interesting. Like I said, yeah, I'm still going to read it, but like that, I guess I was under the impression that it's the Brothers Hawthorne. I thought it was going to be about all four of them. <laughs> Me too. But it I'm seems so that, yes, it is only Jameson and Grayson, which I also understand that too, though, because like that's what people were like really into. So maybe she thinks like, you know, that's what people want to see. I wanted to see the other two brothers as well, but anyway. <laughs> Where does this rank with you of new releases? How do you feel about this one? Um, I think I'm going to read it soon. I think only... Well, maybe it's just because I have it and I'm like, want to read it, but it's not the one I was like most excited for. I do love her writing and stuff because of the naturals that like we were just in their world and stuff, but it's not the one I was like most excited for. I also thought it was going to be all the brothers, so I was a little more excited about that, but I don't know. Yeah. I'm not like. I'm I was not, interested like, to see more of Nash. Oh my God, I wanted more of him so bad. I feel like we got little hints and I'm like, give us, give us something. Her, him and what's the sister's name? Libby? They're yeah, like hanging out so. like the whole book and I was like, I want, yeah, I want to know more. Like a thing. I want to see that in his point of view yeah but so we're not we're not we're not this one for me personally i might read it in september because i feel like it does kind of give a fall vibe but like not deep into october fall but like kind of like the crisp air of fall yeah (laughs) me just relating everything back to fall (laughs) hey let's get a grip you know (laughs) okay next up we have (laughs) things we left behind so this comes out september 5th this is the next book in the knock em out series by lucy score is this the last one yeah yeah i think it is the last one i think it was just a trilogy so things we left behind the book that i've been looking forward to ever since things we never got over came out no seriously as soon as i've read that i've said this before i dm'd her and i was like wait i need lucian's story now and i've been waiting ever since and like i think we've said this on the pod before where i was like i don't understand though like why she wouldn't have just done lucian next and how we were talking about another book that we're about to talk about (laughs) yeah but it's like you said that it's the same way that like elsie held off the story yeah yeah it's like she knows they do it on purpose yeah Yeah, they do because you know what if she did it as a second book maybe some people wouldn't have picked up nash's book you know yeah everyone's been waiting for him for lucian we yes. know we have <laughs> oh my god i cannot wait i've heard amazing things i know rachel catherine read this uh in august and i was watching her august wrap-up yesterday but i don't think i got to the part where she was talking about this book yet but the description for this one oh god i, I know i didn't even read the this description is like, this is like a lucy score book <laughs> and like i haven't read the description of this yet and lucy score can get a little whatever okay yeah, oh yeah could, um, there was only one woman who could set me free <laughs> <laughs> but i would rather so set myself on them. fire <laughs> like what is going on oh, okay oh okay so it's it's giving enemies to lovers a little bit yeah they are enemies right so but didn't they used to okay hey how about i read how about i read it and we'll see <laughs> yeah she's like okay. a librarian oh my gosh we love librarian lucian rollins is a lean mean vengeance seeking mogul why didn't we put machine at the end of that you know what i, know, I, mean? I thought that was, gonna, that was coming <laughs> i thought this was i thought lean mean vengeance seeking machine would have mm-hmm. literally slapped i'm just saying i'm just saying lucy score i know that you're an author and everything but i feel like we could work together on that <laughs> um on a quest to erase his father's mark on the family name he spends every waking minute pulling strings and building an indestructible empire the more money and power he amasses the safer he is from threats except when it comes to the feisty small town librarian that keeps him up at night sloan Walton, I think is her last name, <laughs> is a spitfire determined to carry on her father's quest for justice. Okay, never got that from her, by the way, from the other books. Didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, we didn't um, get, like, too much of, of her, of them, like, librarians. I just knew she was like, a librarian. Feisty. Yeah. Yeah. She'll do, she'll do that just as soon as she figures out exactly what the man she hates did to or for her family. Ooh, so we have oh, a little bit of, like, Oh, so there's, like, a deep tie between them. Yeah. Oh, I didn't like, know that. They were, like... Oh, I didn't know this. Like, what? Because we never got, like, the history of why they, like, argue all the time, you know? Well, no, but I think it is a thing in Things You Never Got Over that they both have known each other forever. Like, weren't they neighbors at one point? Like, they were best friends. I don't remember. I know they have a history. I think that's a thing that they used to be best friends. Don't quote me on it, but I think it is. Um... (laughs) Okay. Sloan trusts Lucian about as far as she can throw his designer-suited body. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Cool. When Vickering accidentally turns... Oh. (laughs) Wait. I I don't know where you are. Hold on. (laughs) When Vickering... Oh, yep. We can skip that. Hey. So this is about (laughs) slow motion. I'm skipping it. (laughs) (laughs) These two... 
okay so when does that start see this is what i mean <laughs> look at my face <laughs> you're never safe when reading a summary <laughs> We can just go down to it says broken men break women. It's what Lucian believes what he's witnessed and he's not going to take that chance with Sloane. He'd rather live a life of solitude than put her in danger. But he learns the hard way that leaving her means leaving her unprotected from other threats. It's the (gasps) second time he's ruthlessly cut her out of his life. There's no way she's going to give him a third chance. He's just going to have to make one for himself. A third chance? A third girl. But see, this is my problem with reading the summaries. It's like, did we just spoil part of the book for us? Like, the second chance is going to be them rekindling, and then something happens to her. He leaves. Like, you Uh, know, because I heard this book is like 580 pages or something like that. Yeah, that's why I don't read these summaries. I just, like, go in for it. This one I was going to go in blind, only knowing that he's, like, a businessman of some sort and wears suits, and she's a librarian, and they fight. That's all all I really knew, and I just loved them. Yeah. And now I know there's, like, something deeper in there. Yeah. I don't know. It's just an, anyway, you know, that one comes out happen. the 5th. Is it September 5th? Yes. I have I all the dates pulled up. I was talking to my friend, and she, so she lives in the UK, and she went to her Waterstones, and it was out already. She bought it. She hey, maybe it's out at your barns. You know how early they put out new releases? No, I know. I'm, go- I'm going today. I'm told, I said I'm going every single day until, <laughs> until it's out. I will. Okay. I'll should be one. All right. Next up, we have The Long Game by Elena Armas. This is also coming out on September 5th, and this is the same author as The Spanish Love Deception. I read The Spanish Love Deception, didn't like it at all, and I've never read another one of her books, but I've heard that this is like a super highly say, anticipated read. I read The Spanish Love Deception 2021, maybe. Didn't like it. Yeah. I never read another one of her books. But yeah. I had the American Roommate Experiment, and I wanted to read same. it, but I was like nervous because someone was like, if you didn't like Spanish Love Deception, won't like this. I was like, oh. Yeah, because it's also like characters from the Spanish Love Deception into that book. So it kind of feels like it's tied. But I think that I would give this a chance. So this one says a disgraced soccer exec reluctantly enlists the help of a retired soccer star in coaching a children's team in the small town love story in the vein of Ted Lasso. And it happened one summer. Uh Adeline has spent years perfecting her daily routine, wake up at dawn, drive to Miami Flames offices, try her hardest to leave a mark, go home, repeat, but her routine is disrupted when a video of her in an altercation with the team's mascot goes viral rather than fire her, the team's owner, who happens to be her father, sends Adeline to the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, where she's tasked with the turning around of a struggling local soccer team. Hey, how did we go to that conclusion? You know what I mean? Yeah, that was, it's always (laughs) the father that's like... No, it's always like the, the daughter solution is to him. go to a small town. Hey. <laughs> it's giving know. rock bottom girl. Wait, is no, I was literally girl? about to say that, Sarah. I was literally about to say that. <laughs> when she goes to coach the team. Oh, God. Or the failing team in the small town. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um, where's that? Uh, the Green Warriors as a way to redeem herself, whatever. She plans to crumble upon discovering that. Oh, her plans. Not She doesn't plan to crumble. Her plans do crumble upon discovering that the players wear tutus to practice. Okay. Keep what? pet goats and are terrified of Adeline and our nine-year-old kids. To make things worse, also in town is Cameron, goalkeeping prodigy whose presence is somewhat of a mystery. Cam is the perfect candidate to help Adeline, but after one very unfortunate first encounter involving a rooster, Cam's leg in Adeline's bumper. He's also set on running her out of town, but banishment is not an option. Not again. Helping the Sprague Tag children's team is her road to redemption, and she is playing the long game with or without Cam's help. Unless someone tells me this is, like, the best book they've ever read, I don't think I'll probably read it. I think this is cute. I think I would read it. I don't... I don't know. I don't love the the kids team, and I don't know. Cause I didn't love Rock Sarah Rock just Girl. doesn't like kids, though. She doesn't like the <laughs> pregnancy trope because she doesn't like kids in books. <laughs> and when there's a team of them... Yeah. I don't think it's for me. I just feel like it's not at the very top of my TBR by any means, but I feel like I definitely will buy this and, like, give it a chance yeah, if you like it, I'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> Us with everything. Hey, if you like it, I'll read it. All right. Okay. Next up. We oh, have, I didn't know this was a... Yeah, I, d- I, I went through the responses and found out that some of these were coming out. So this is yeah. the Wake Up Call. This is Beth O'Leary's new release. This comes out September 26th. Um, I think I've only read one Beth O'Leary book, and that was The Flat Share. I, I do the have share. The No Show by Beth O'Leary that I never yeah. read. I tried to read the flat show like five different times, and I just could um, not. His the guy's point of view in that like it was written just so. Yeah, it's a little weird. bit more mundane. Yeah, I have not. I don't know. I tried. Um, I I think her books are more of a like 
literary fiction with like a romance subplot you know yeah. what i mean that would make sense because i just couldn't get into it i don't know why yeah i don't know this one um, is called the wake-up call two yeah. sworn enemies one failing hotel love is the last thing they need Ooh, Ooh two hotel I, receptionists i feel like we don't usually get that and yeah. arch rivals Wait, what's a, find a collection of old wedding rings and compete to return them to their owners discovering their own love story along the way that sounds cute oh that does sound cute it's like you never really read about a hotel receptionist right <laughs> no i don't feel like they're represented enough in fiction it's <laughs> you're not wrong it says the hotel is quite literally falling apart so when izzy and lucas are given the same shift on the hotel's front desk they have no choice but to put their differences aside and see it through the hotel won't stay afloat beyond christmas without some sort of miracle but when izzy returns a guest's lost wedding ring the reward convinces management that this might be the way to fix everything with four rings still sitting in the lost and found the race is on for izzy and lucas to save their beloved hotel and their jobs uh, that many people Ew. lost their wedding rings huh that many people are losing their wedding rings i think that's, that's a problem I mean. hey are we losing them or are we <laughs> taking them off you know what i mean <laughs> is this like a christmas e i know it's it says, christmasy <laughs> it, the cover is giving like not that it's giving christmas but it says that they can't they have to stay afloat yeah it won't stay afloat like, beyond christmas you know what though i feel like maybe i'll pick this book up around christmas yeah wait when does it come out it doesn't hold on let me go to notion oh i'm in notion what does it, it say? It comes out September 26th. Oh, well, it's soon. Yeah, maybe yeah. like a little Christmas yeah. romance vibe, even though maybe it, like it November. said Christmas once, and I'm running with it. <laughs> well, but it does give you that vibe, like maybe like November, the holiday seasons are coming up, but they're not quite yeah. here yet. But maybe you want a little bit of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I like this one I sounds cute. Yeah, it sounds cute. Definitely still not at the top of my TBR by any means. Yeah, so like I said, like we said, maybe pick it up. Okay. Yeah. Um next one up we have wildfire by hannah grace this one comes out october 3rd yeah this another arc that come out get. the same date i know this one i literally seen almost everyone have this arc i just saw yeah. someone post that they're starting it today at uh, what guys <laughs> especially after i feel like i oh i raved about icebreaker whenever that came out last mm -hmm. year i read it last september read last september and i raved about it like i loved it when it came out um, so this is the second one. I think it's called, yes, Maple Hills is the series. So the first one is Icebreaker and the second one is Wildfire. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I, I'm happy that she didn't keep going with the hockey romance. Me too. Because they would have gotten, I, 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 I like somewhere. that they're all still like on the hockey team, but she changed up the setting. Yeah. I think this is fun. Yes. I love the, the, the backdrop of this. Do you want to read this one? It's cute. For sure. Okay. Latest series in Maple Hills follows two summer camp counselors who reconnect after a sizzling one night stand. So the students Russ and Aurora cross paths at a party celebrating the end of the academic year where a drinking game results in them having a passionate one night stand. Awesome. Um, Aurora, <laughs> Aurora slips away before Russ even has a chance to ask her full name. Imagine their surprise when they bump into each other on the first day of summer camp where they are both counselors. That's actually really funny that, like, another one where, like, first was, like, hotel receptionist you don't really read about. I don't really read about, like, camp counselors. You know what I mean? No, I've said this multiple times. Very I diverse. wish more books talked about summer camp. Like, I love, like, the that backdrop. Vibe. I wish this came out over summer. Wait, why is it no, coming same. out in October? <laughs> um, it says, imagine they're surprised when they bump into each other, hoping to escape their complicated home life by sending the, spending the summer working. Russ hopes if he gets far enough away from Mabel Hills, he can avoid, should I read, is this a spoiler? Like, should I keep going? Yeah, maybe we should just not. <laughs> yeah, because it goes into, like, why. Yeah, I think maybe anyway. just, like, the bones of it, because yeah, I don't want to know a bunch of, yeah. yeah, so they're camp counselors, and they're kind of just, like, leaning on each other in this time, and I'm excited, because I, do. Really I like her writing. Icebreaker, and I really like her writing, and her covers yeah. are so cute. Oh, yeah, my Yeah, this God. is really, this is so cute next to Icebreaker, too, because they're so different vibes, but they look cute. Oh, yeah, you can tell it's, like, the same author and stuff still. Yeah, I'm excited okay, about Dustin. that one. Um, yeah, me too, and it comes out October 3rd, so I'm very excited about that, but like you said, I wish that it came out during the summertime. I feel like it would have hit so hard yeah but um this one's at the more of the top of my dbr yeah i think this is, like when it comes it. out i'm gonna like immediately get it oh yeah no and immediately read it probably for yeah. me I, yeah immediately all right <laughs> next one i don't think that sarah cares about <laughs> 
But this comes out October 10th. I, this is called up by Liz Tom Forde. Is that how you say her last name? I'm not know. too sure. Um, I, this she, one I have like a slight, a slight chance. Because if I read right move, there's like, if it's a 50-50. Yeah. yeah. So this is the third book in the Windy City series which is mile high the right move and then now this is the third one which is caught up there's not a cover out for this which is interesting because it comes out october 10th so oh. maybe, maybe she's like a out. surprise reveal i don't know okay i just know that it, when i looked it up it said october 10th i don't know if this is october 10th of like next year or oh yeah maybe it's year. not even yeah because well, i was we'll like, find out you guys would tell us i'm sure but this one is about this one's interesting because with mile high which both of us did you dnf that or did you finish it no i dnf'd at like 40 percent yeah we both dnf'd that but then i read the right move and i gave that a four stars like i really liked the right move um because i feel like the problem with mile high for me was just like the guy was just so like i couldn't get yeah, with I never want to read and about it was a guy so like him odd because can I tell you that when I read The Right Move, he it was like a 180 when you were reading his character. Yeah, and I knew by the end of the first book, like, he was going to be different than when he... And it just, I think it was, like, too quick for him to, like... I, I don't have to get... We do not have to get into my life right now. <laughs> no. But basically, this is the third book in that series. And mm-hmm. so, I'm a little bit excited for this one. Do I think that I'm going to be, like... Um, oh, I just accidentally... <laughs> Uh, whatever do i think that i'm gonna be like oh i'm immediately gonna read this no but i do think that i will read this eventually this one it's like because with mile high it was about two characters and then the second one was about like her brother and her best friend like that's what the second one's about yeah, and they're all this different one is sports. not like related to any of them this one is oh. about a baseball player who was first... friends with the guy in the second book okay so yeah so no one's related but he was a character in the second one yeah so this one's just basically about Kai and he's a single dad. He plays in the MLB and he needs somebody to nanny and like go on the road with him because he's a single oh. dad and he doesn't want to let his kid out of his sight. Okay, good dad. So that's what it's about. Oh, okay. These tropes are it's giving it's giving Heartless Belsy Silver but make it MLB baseball. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. I'm gonna, Which I'm, gonna, I'm excited. I would read this. Yeah. I need to like, I would read stop, it. Like ugh. The difference between Mile High and what I hear about Right Move is just so different that I think I need to just read Right Move and then I'll probably end up reading this eventually. I it's love Ryan Shea, who is the yeah, guy. Yeah, he's hearing like, that. Yeah, this one sounds him. fun. Yes, I like that okay. she does like different sports in each of the books because the first one the was first, hockey, second one was basketball. Yeah, I like that baseball. she like, does different yeah. ones. I like that. <laughs> Next one! Okay, Hopeless by Elsie Silver. This comes out October 13th. And um, I do want to say this before we like talk about this, though. Because I have seen a few comments because we do talk about the Chestnut Spring series, which this is the fifth, mm-hmm. fifth and final book? Yeah. It's the fifth one, right? Yes. I'm looking at them. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. Is it? Wait, there's... Pa- a flawless, heartless, powerless, reckless hopeless yeah so this is the fifth and final book in the series so this is the mirror cover i already i already have it pre-ordered um i we had been getting a few comments on the podcast talking about like where can i find the mirror cover of like the first two of them i think Uh, Um, they no longer sell the mirror covers yeah so the you can get the hopeless one but hold on i have the post okay so the flawless one was the flawless and heartless were gone july and august but the powerless you can get it by September 12th, it's gone. And then Reckless is gone in October. Hopeless is gone December 5th. So if you want those ones, it's on her Instagram pinned on a post, like when they're going to be gone. But yeah, the the mirror ones, they weren't going to, aren't they the, they're, she's only selling the, um, oh, I don't know which, what, it's like the pink cover, like the flaws is the pink one. Yeah. Do you know which one I'm talking about? It's like plain pink and then it has like the rose on it and they're not the mirror yeah. covers. It just, yeah, this is not the mirror covers. They're still cute, but the flawless and the heartless ones are gone gone so unfortunately if you guys haven't started the series yet you can't get the first two in the mirror covers unless you want to pay like second hand whatever yeah, somebody's sure selling, them, for. selling them yeah but um they're all coming out in just like the new covers now which mm-hmm. i hate i mean chloe walsh is doing the same thing where she's no longer coming out with like the original covers whatever we won't get yeah. into it hopeless though <laughs> this comes out october 13th and i this is like at the top of my tbr like i, I am saying. so freaking excited for this one like this and things we left behind at the very top yeah uh, yeah i'm excited to read this one i've been counting down the days for Bo since the first yes. one. just whenever um, you get a glimpse of like a brother like this in the stories you immediately want theirs because it's like the fun brother but there's always something else to them oh my god i've been waiting i want his story so bad 
Well, especially after you see, and you see a little bit of his character development and like things that start to happen to him in the background of all of the books. So you kind of get introduced to him as this like fun loving, like very lighthearted, but you know that there's something like lurking back there, yeah. you know? She did such a good and job then, like, of like showing it in all the other books. Yes. And making us And not giving too much away. Mm-hmm. Like it's, yeah. But you, okay. Th- I just always think like when somebody's like, oh, I love when there's trauma. I'm like, that's like a little messed up. But like same. No, me too. Oh, I love because it, it gives like so much to the story when they have something going on. You and know, I'm, what I mean? I'm so excited though. I'm so excited because I feel like he's gonna be like protective. Mm. <laughs> this one though, the tropes in this one are crazy. Yeah, it's like he's, fake. Is it? Fake, it's obviously fake in this small town of Chestnut, and then it, he's the military hero. She's a bartender. Um, there's an age gap. He's 35. She's 22, and they're fake fiancés. Um, it's gonna be crazy. Oh my god, it's gonna be so, it's gonna be so good. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I'm really sorry. I love sorry. the really fake fiance that she threw in there. Amazing. I'm so excited. I'm like I'm so excited and it's the girl that in the first book I was like, I think that her and Bo are gonna be a thing. Yeah, and I had read hint. them and then I was waiting on you to like read the series and then I was like, hey, do you think like when you read them, I was like, hey, do you think that the, like this girl and Bo are going to be a thing? And you were like, who? I was like, this girl and Bo. And you're like, oh yeah, I thought that too. Yeah. They had like a little something in the very, the very yeah. first book in Flawless. It's a very, there's, and there's like a, like you catch it. It's like a slight, yeah. like it's the tiniest, teeniest, tiniest interaction. But I was like, that's so purposeful that she yeah, wrote Yeah, because that. when you read like series like this, when they're like interconnected about people, you kind of pick up on like what the other characters are doing. Cause you know, they're going to get a book and you're like, wait, yeah. what's their story going to be? And that, yeah, that one happened in the first one. I'm so excited for this. Honestly, <sighs> I think it's Things We Left Behind and then Hopeless and then Wildfire for me. That's like the top three right now that I'm like, I think mine can't wait. Okay. Things We Left Behind. Step. It? That one, this one, and the Stephanie Garber one. I'm so excited for it. I need it. Which that's the next one. Hello, oh. October 24th. Hey, perfect curse, timing. True Love comes out by Stephanie Garber. Um, literally so excited. It's just because it, it's the way the second one, this is the Once Upon a once Upon a Broken Heart and The Battle of Never After, the way The Battle of Never After finished, we've been on a cliffhanger for so long. How do, how do you leave someone on a cliffhanger like this? In pain, well, like agony. <laughs> at least we weren't, like, when the book first released, she didn't tell anybody that was going to be a trilogy. She just made it out like it was going to be a duology, right? Uh, so can you so imagine sad. reading that book upon its release and thinking that was the end? No. She's so sneaky. She didn't say... She, it was like... I. Was it like a month or two after, I think, that she like told everybody, like, there's going to be another book coming out? I don't know, but I probably would have cried. I mean, I could cried at Ronnie, but like not knowing if there was going to be one after that, because the way it ends, it's just the craziest cliffhanger ever. And of course, we're not going to like do a description for this one either, because again, it's in the middle of a trilogy. So mm-hmm. the description would be a spoiler for what's going on. But just know that if you haven't read Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After, you have until October 24th to do and it. And you or really, else. really should no it's so (laughs) good you really should and honestly i always recommend this series too like if you were if you're scared because it's a fantasy book and you're like i don't really read fantasy this one doesn't even feel like a fantasy like okay it is a fantasy because it's make-believe whatever all that stuff but it's not like a politics or anything to do with that it's It's honestly very alice in wonderland it's very just cut cut and dry it feels like you're reading almost like a storybook tale like that's yeah. what it feels like it doesn't feel like complicated politics and like how this works and how this works it's literally just like a kingdom a bunch of like fairy tale stuff going on it's very simple to get it's so good i'm so excited oh. okay what's the next one what's the next one <gasps> the gram, the gram effect. effect this comes out october 31st so it comes out on halloween oh this is fun I hate that cover. Oh, I hate it. No, I actually, and I honestly, I'm going to just say this right now. I, I got a lot of people talking about this uh, in the mentions, which is why it's here. I will not be reading this book. I was just going to say, I don't think I want to read this. I have not thought because, about off campus in so long. I read that in like 2021. Well, that's the thing. I haven't thought about off campus. And then like when I did try to read Briar U, I, I, no, I think I still read a Briar U book this year. It's just like the writing and everything wasn't that good to yeah. me. And um, also, I just don't want to read a series about, like, p- characters that I used to love, like their kids. That's why I haven't read the Like Us series. <laughs> yeah, I don't think um, I want to read that either. <laughs> I don't want to read about their kids because I feel like it almost, in a way, like, ruins 
their characters, which doesn't really make sense, but it's just something with yeah, me that I can't do yeah. it. It looks like she's like and hunched over on the cover, not just sitting no, crisscross. Like, she or looks like this. She's like, yeah, like I it does not look like she's like, sitting on bleachers. Like, no. like what is that? <laughs> it's she just a cover. Yeah, I don't love the cover. Either. Did you see that she's redoing or she's putting out new covers of the Off Campus series? Yeah, and I hate those as well. Yeah, I don't. Anyway, I read those a while ago. I just don't. I never had like the the urge to read the briar you or like any more of like that series like i feel like it was a good mm-hmm. series when i was like starting reading again like it's like one of those series because it's like easy it's an easy read but yeah well, i want to get into this i loved the deal like i can remember sitting on my floor and literally just flying through the deal but i didn't really feel any other way about any of those other books who was the deal and i forget who's who with this dean? one yeah dean is the one that you really liked yeah i don't remember which and book i it hated was, <laughs> because <laughs> all the other ones just felt the same to me i don't know why yes they, like, they all feel like said alike. that's why i think that they the fourth had... one she made the tropes in the fourth one like a little bit different because they were like they were so similar all the books yes that's literally what i literally said it felt like the same exact storyline the same exact way that the like relationship unraveled in all of them and i just like, yeah. didn't like it but with this book it's just basically about garrett and hannah's daughter and she i think is like wanting to be on the hockey team like the women's hockey team and then she like teams up with this guy who like wants to be noticed by garrett because Uh-oh. garrett's like this legend and <laughs> they kind of team up i just don't i don't know i just i'm not gonna read it <laughs> yeah i don't know there's a very slim chance of me reading that no yeah no slim to none honestly anyway oh, next, look at our step. next one woo, 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 woo. <laughs> i'm so excited it's so iron excited. flame by rebecca mm, yaros the mm, second mm, one mm. this one comes out november 7th yes and, and i will be reading fourth wing this month so we can chat about that when i do on this podcast oh um, i love how sarah tried to dodge me in her dms the other day because when she did her <laughs> cute little um the blindly like everybody blindly picks tbr which i love participating in but i, I knew as soon as i clicked you. no i clicked on the first story and i could tell that you were doing it um to the uh, books the book, because it had yeah. like a pencil and like a heart and I slid up and I said is this collided by Lauren Asher and then I slid up again and I was like oh this is fourth wing and you were like it's a secret I was like don't dodge me near DMs like I can tell which one it is and I voted for I didn't those. want to tell you because I put a quarter silver flames <laughs> with fourth wing like next to I each knew. other yeah and I literally said fourth wing because a quarter silver flames is just so long yeah I think and I'm gonna listen you have to have the world in a while good luck listening to it that book is literally <laughs> Well, no, the first half I'm going to listen because it's like the drama, dramatized one is out. You think it's going to sound probably like. <laughs> I just cannot get myself to sit down, open that book and read it. Like if there's any way of me getting through it, I have to start listening. I'm talking about the smut that you're going to hear. Oh, no. I, if there's smut in an audiobook, I turn it off. Turn it off. I will read or I will skip. I will not be listening to people talking uh, smut in my oh ear. Oh, my that God. Is, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that is against the rules. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway um, Iron, Flame. Iron Flame. Yeah, so this is the one man, after the I Queen. am so excited for this. I could like sink my teeth into this book <laughs> and like tear it apart. I told tear Jess. It apart, did I tell you this? Well, I got the arc for Fourth Wing, so if I get the Iron Flame one, I'm gonna ship it over. <laughs> Oh my god, Rebecca Yaros, if I don't get the arc for Iron Flame and you give out arcs for Iron Flame, I might actually rip all of my hair out. <laughs> no, because I don't know how I got the arc for Fourth Wing because I got it before it, no hype. It was like literally just came out that she sent arcs out. No idea how I got it. And I like sometimes I'll get arcs or I'll get books and I just put them on my bookshelf and I'll like kind of forget about it because I don't hear about any of them. And then and then it happened. I went to Barnes and I bought Fourth Wing and I came home and I looked in my shelf and I was like, oh, hold on. <laughs> still reliving that but we can't talk about this one either because one sarah hasn't read it and two because it is the second in the series but i can't wait <laughs> zayden reese and zayden are like my top two. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh That's there's nothing news. like it there's nothing oh my gosh i think of zayden <laughs> okay I'm not gonna get into <laughs> it actually don't think i should get into it <laughs> Next up, we have Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood, which is coming out November 7th. We actually have a few books. No, just another book that's coming out November 7th. But <laughs> this is her this first one's a YA. YA. And it says, um, Life's moving pieces bring rival chess players together in a match for the heart. Mallory's done with chess. Every move counts nowadays after the sport led to destruction of her family four years earlier. Her focus is on her mom, her sisters, and the dead-end job that keeps a light on, lights on until she agrees to play in one last charity tournament um 
and wipes the board with King Killer. That's his that's his nickname. <laughs> All right. No- Didn't know Nolan- chess was like that. <laughs> Nolan Sawyer. Current world champion and reigning bad boy of chess. I need to like get this to my brother because he loves chess. <laughs> I'm Can you sorry, imagine? I can't. And I give him a mm-hmm. YA chess book. No. The he's the bad boy of chess. Like I didn't even think that that could be a thing. A thing. Um, it says that his loss to an unknown rookie. Rookie. Oh, that's a funny pun. Shocks everyone. What's even more confusing? His desire to cross pawns again. What kind of gamut is Nolan playing? I don't know. Here's the thing. Her books that I've read, like all the books that she's come out with, or whatever ones I've read. They the way it's written could almost be if they weren't the age they are could read like a YA book. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, like, her doing a YA, I feel like it could get really cheesy really fast. Oh, yeah. Even by the summer. Like, so I'm nervous. I'm definitely going to read this. I'm very excited for it, but I'm nervous. This is at the top of my TBR. I'm very excited for it because I really want to see what she does with YA because I feel like an interesting kind of flip side of this is Lynn Painter, who I feel like I really enjoy her YA, but I don't know about her adult romances. Oh, really? I like her adult romance. (laughs) I only read one, actually. (laughs) But I really, really, but so really she has like it. a few. I started the Love Wager, but I never finished it. Oh, I love and I'm just like, that's th- this is the thing. I'm very interested to see what Allie Hazelwood does. Also, there's another Allie Hazelwood book that we'll talk about. That's a 2024 release, mm-hmm. and she's stepping outside of the women in STEM, which I still feel like she does so well, and I really love when she does. It. And I don't care if people think that all of our books are the same. I eat all of them up. Okay, <laughs> I love every single one of them. Yeah, she's trying different but, things. I'm interested to see like what she does outside of that. I'm very interested to see this, yeah. and this is also at the top of new releases. The cover me, is really so. cute on this one. It it's is. Giving I saw her read this in her 24 hour yeah. video, and I think she really liked it. Yeah. All right. Nice. Also coming out November 7th is Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. I forgot this is a about new this. series. Yes, this is a new oh, series. It's the Lakefront Billionaire series. I it love that she place, writes about billionaires. Yeah, it takes place in the the um. What's the last book called? Final Offer. The Dreamland Billionaires? The fi- how the Final Offer is in like the, the small town. Yeah. I think it yeah. takes place there. With, I don't know what it's called. But I think it takes place there, but like with different characters. It does. It does because, okay, so there's He's a part at the it. end. And I noticed this. I think I said this because I read this book in a 24-hour video. And I was like, I think that this is, this is what she's doing. Because there's like a part at the end where the house that they're in the whole entire time is in this like very nice neighborhood. And the guy, there's a guy in the house like wanting to buy it or whatever. And they spend like three pages like talking about him. Like he has mm-hmm. nothing to do with the story. He's never there. He was just like a random guy that popped up. And I was like... I think I said in the video, I was like, she's definitely going to do something with this guy. Yeah, you can like, always pick a up on things or like something. That. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's what this is. It's like, um, she says that Julian, yeah, Julian and Dahlia. It says, Julian, if I ever caught on fire, Dahlia would fan the flames with a smile. So when she returns to Lake Wisteria, I fully intend to avoid the interior designer. At least until my meddling mother exploits my savior complex, the faster I help Dahlia find her creative spark, the sooner she will leave town. So she's, he's trying to get rid of Dahlia, and she's an interior designer. Yeah. And. Yeah, so they have to, like, work together, because it oh, sounds like he. Childhood rivals and fam- family frenemies. Oh. Oh. Interesting. This is interesting. Yeah. They are renovating a historic house together. This is fun. Lots of different jobs. Okay. This, this. This. Up close. Yeah. Up close. Upcoming books. <laughs> This is fun. I really, I, I honestly really enjoyed Lauren Asher's books. So I'm very excited for this one. I love that she writes about billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm excited for this. Yes. Okay. Next up, we have Betting on You by Lynn Painter. I, is this yeah. a YA? I think it is. Wait, actually? Okay, this comes. I think this is it, yeah. right? It says, f- yeah, it follows I think this a teen girl who unwittingly finds herself at the center of a bet while working at a water park. So many different jobs. She works I at a water it. park. But again, why didn't this come out in the summertime? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh my God, her covers are so cute. Look at him in his little pink heart them. pants. Oh my God, I love them. This is this one comes out November 23rd. Ooh, we're nearing Christmas I think, here. I think Haley read this one too. Me, <laughs> just being like, I think no, Haley I read think this she one did. Too. Yeah, and she liked it, but she said that she liked obviously she's like better than the movies better. All right, but she said that the guy was kind of giving like bad boy, but he like struggles with anxiety and panic attacks. I think which same, <laughs> giving Conrad. 
I'm not a bad boy or whatever, but I think it's like, yeah, they have a bet going on or something. Just like very YA, very cute. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait for it because I really like Lynn Painter's YA books, like I said. This is at the top of my TBR too. I'm very excited for this. Yeah, I think as soon as this one comes out, I'll definitely go get it. Oh, yeah. Last (gasps) for our 2023 releases, we have Ruthless Vows (laughs) by Rebecca Ross. This one comes out December 26th. How are we feeling about this one, Sarah? I'm so excited. I'm hoping. You know, sometimes when, well, other than like Barnes putting books out early, sometimes Amazon will send it a little bit early. Yeah. I'm hoping this is like a Christmas miracle to get it on Christmas or something. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm so excited because the way that the first one ended, there's just so much I need to know. This is the second one after, did you say Divine Rivals? Did you say this? No. Oh, okay, this is after Divine Rivals. Um, oh, and I'm just really, really, really excited because I just, I just actually went through Divine Rivals and like annotated and tabbed it. So I'm like really needing this book right now. Yeah, this is, um, I'm excited to see how this goes mm-hmm. it ends with, on a cliffhanger the first one so like yeah that's what i'm saying we're Left waiting, we're waiting. okay so we have our 2024 releases so i put crazy. these in chronological order as well so we'll talk about them as they go so first up we have the breakup tour by emily wiberly and austin sigmund broca this one comes out january 16th of 2024 um i've only no I, oh my god, I've never read a book by them. I read the roughest draft, but I didn't, like, love it. It was very, felt slow. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I wouldn't be opposed. I love this cover, though. Like, this covers everything to me. Yeah, cover's cute. And I'm assuming it says the breakup tour. I'm assuming that means literally exactly what it says, because the well, covers of a, a woman singing on stage. Yeah, I think it's, like, a second chance romance from what I can remember. Hold on. I actually have the... Uh, stuff on my phone so let me uh, pull that up for you well there's so many like hey where's good books coming out next year these are all just like crazy authors coming at us right now literally sorry i have everything let me find it so it says a rising star musician has a second chance at love with an old flame she remembers all too well <laughs> okay taylor <laughs> that's interesting yeah i don't know yeah I'll probably they yeah. do a lot of like second chance romances that's like what every single book that they put out is is a second chance romance and the authors if you didn't know these two they are married couple yeah they are They're married together. so that's fun um next up we have none other than <laughs> crescent city three by sarah j mass which comes out january 30th of 2024 the i am so excited cute. i'm shaking in my boots the cover is magical it and is. exquisite and when you after you read the crescent city books and you look back at the covers you kind of start to understand them so i can't wait to understand like what's what's kind of going yeah. on with this cover. this one i just i told Jack i was gonna read throne of glass next month in october yes. and i told her probably around like christmas time before january when this comes out i'll get into crescent city so, so you guys heard that so start your <laughs> throne of glass and crescent city reads if you haven't yeah. already because i told sarah that as soon as she finishes the throne of glass series we're literally gonna do a whole entire podcast episode just dedicated to talking about it yes, i already have started a folder get- of tiktok <laughs> saves i cannot wait for it i'm genuinely shaking in my boots so you guys have to start reading it with me yeah along literally with me, you guys have so to can talk about it yes um, so um then we have if only my- i had told her yeah. by laura nolan this comes out February 6th. Yes, it was supposed to come out this year, but she needed more time with it. So this is after If He Had Been With Me. Oh my god. Yeah, this one's gonna hurt, because this is the, I'm pretty sure it's just If He Had Been With Me, but in Finney's point of view, and if you yes. know anything about this book, that's literally just like heartbreak, pain, torture for, what, 350 pages? So oh my god. it's gonna be a rough one. It's gonna, be, it's gonna hurt, but I'm excited. Cause this is like, one that I'm very excited for, perfect. but like, I don't know if I can do it, you know what I mean? Yeah. We do like, like I'm gonna stare at it prepare. on the shelf and be scared. Yeah, you're gonna have to prepare yourself before getting into this one. Oh my god, it's gonna hurt so bad. I'm already gonna like start crying over it. Oh my god, stop! I literally can't do it. Okay, <laughs> next up we have Magnolia Parks Three Into the Dark. This is to be determined, but it's coming out in February. But she hasn't released a specific date or a cover yet. I think she's putting it out on um, VJ's birthday, the 14th, which is Valentine's Day. Yeah, and she posted on Instagram these like cryptic little things, and I think. She's going to reveal one of the covers for it. I'm not too sure, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see the cover. I did get the first chapter, I think it was. I read the first yeah. chapter, and I already know this is going to be probably my favorite out of the series. So I'm very, oh, very yeah. excited about this. 
Um, this is like I think we already know how I'm gonna feel. So this is huge for you. This is really big for me because it's the last of the Magnolia Parks um series. Well, not like Daisy hates there'll be more books, but the last like Magnolia and BJ book, and like that is my entire life and personality. So it's gonna be rough. Oh, I didn't know it was their last book. Yeah, there's gonna be I think <gasps> I'm not sure how many more Daisy hates. I think there's like a few more Daisy hates ones, and then there's gonna be I think another one in like the Magnolia Parks world with different. I'm pretty sure Claire. Remember Claire, Tom England's sister, or Tom England's yeah, whatever. Um, his brother, dead brother. That's so interesting. Fiance. That she chose to write about Claire. Yeah. Well, everyone keeps asking about like other characters, and she's like, I don't like. She didn't have a plan. Like she doesn't want to do that. I think so. Yeah, the last with Magdalene and BJ. So mm-hmm. we'll see how that goes. We we shall. Um, next up, we have Bride by Allie Hazelwood, which comes out February 6th. This is like a new thing. This is her very much branching out, and I'm very excited for it. I've never read a book like this before. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, this is, so this is going to be, um, like a fantasy werewolf vampire, but I'm like nervous. Is this YA or is this? Um, I think it's adult, so. I'm like nervous because she yeah, makes like, adult. like her main character is like very, a like, they have a big personality and, like, it gets cheesy. And I'm, like, sometimes in, like, fantasies you can't get, like, cheesy. You know what I mean? So, like, the mix between it is gonna be interesting. Well, this makes sense because she, like, wrote a lot of fan fiction and if you were, yeah. like, into the fanfic Wattpad, like, this 100% fits. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. So, it's gonna this Maybe one, I'll give Twilight. Twilight, think, but what? Make it YA. Was yeah, Twilight think, YA? Oh, my God, it was. Yeah, it they was. were in high school, weren't they? Yeah. I think this is, like, adult, though. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, because it says love theoretically, and usually, like, if it was a YA, it would say something about check and mate, I'm pretty sure. No. I really don't know. I'm excited. Um, This one says she's the only daughter of a vampire councilman of the Southwest and is outcast again. Um, She lives in Anonym, whatever. She lives among humans. She's been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the wares. <laughs> oh, man. So she basically goes to live with this werewolf and she's a vampire. Okay. <laughs> it's literally giving Twilight. I'm very interested to see. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. What I'm I like, feel I'll, about this one. I'm excited, though. It's different. I will definitely read it. Like, I'm very much, I will go into this with her and see what she does with this. I'm very interested to see what this turns into. Um, Next up, when Abby Jimenez, she just (laughs) announced this, and I am so excited. I am in love with the cover. The cover's giving happy place. I love it. It's Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. This comes out April 2nd of 2024, and I'm so excited for it. (laughs) Me too. I love her books. I love her writing. I don't know, what is this one? I love that she puts dogs in every book. Like it really just like it's because oh so my god, sweet. she loves. Oh, it's it's the best thing ever. Like this and cover this, is really cute. I love it so much. I literally love it. Okay, this one says Justin has a curse. Um, every woman he dates goes on to find their soulmate the second they break up. When a woman slides into his DMs with the same problem, they come up with a plan. They'll date each other and break up. Their curses will cancel each other out, and they'll go on to find the love of their lives. That's interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. I feel like her books are just so light and funny, and I just feel like they're always good. So I'm very excited for this one. Yeah, I'm excited. Very interesting premise, and I love the cover so much, so I can't wait to own that. The cover's, like, really, really pretty. Yes. Next up, we have The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This comes out April 2nd of 2024 as well. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's giving the cheat sheet. (laughs) I was just going to say that. Oh, because I was thinking, isn't it like a, what's it called? Like a fake, is it marriage? Um, let me see. So it says, college sweethearts meet again years later. Um, Nora McKenzie's entire career lies in the hands of famous NFL tight end Derek Ponder, who also happens to be her extremely hot college ex-boyfriend. Uh, they oh. didn't end things gracefully, and she should have back whatever. Derek is her first client as an official full-time sports agent, and he's holding a grudge. Blah, blah, blah. So they're exes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, they're married. They get married when... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's interesting because their ex is... I don't know. But I like And she Adams. becomes his, like, manager or something? Interesting. I don't know. I'm excited, though. I like her writing. I think it's fun. The cover's kind of cute. I mean, it's interesting because there's a city in the background, but then there's a palm tree. 
yeah i'm very i don't know what's going on here i am very <laughs> excited though because i really liked when in rome and practice makes perfect and i feel like yeah. with how her writing has been recently because i read when in rome practice makes perfect and then i went back and read one of her older books and i didn't love it but with how her writing has been i'm excited for this one yeah i loved practice makes perfect so it's yes fun. shall then be we fun. have okay taming seven <laughs> taming Chloe seven Walsh. This comes out this April 16th. Claire and Gibbsy's Oh my story. gosh. What I've been waiting for. What mm-hmm. I've been waiting for. This is what for. everyone's been waiting for. I didn't even like the first. Sorry to say that out loud. But <laughs> I've been even waiting for this one. <laughs> like oh, this is a. Gosh. Everyone globally has been waiting. I cannot wait. Oh my God. I can't wait. Like I'm genuinely so excited. And she did say that all of the couples are only going to have one book from here on out. Which hey chloe did break my heart a little bit I'm not gonna lie to you because i then this one's the post pages. that she made about that and she was like oh yeah there's only gonna be one book and then i commented and i was like hey it's okay if the book's 1500 pages like i'll read all of it if you want to <laughs> slap it all in one book uh, maybe she'll just make them longer since both books that she's been doing are like 700 800 pages each she'll just put it all together and make it a <gasps> thousand page romance what I just realized, like, I'm looking at this cover, and I just realized why the seven is underwater, and I want to die, and I want to cry. Does someone drown? <laughs> I'll tell you after we're done recording. Okay. <laughs> like, there are tears in my eyes. Oh, my God. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's something really traumatic. Oh, it's something that you already know, like, if you read Binding and Keeping 13. And, oh, my gosh, I just realized that I the seven's underwater. I literally anything that happened in that book. <laughs> Wait, can I think? Give me a sec. No, it happened in the second one, like, towards the end. Oh, okay. I so, had like 200 pages left of that one. <laughs> Go back and read it. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> last, but certainly not least, we have Funny Story by Emily Henry, which comes out April 23rd. Probably I am like so freaking excited for this one. Like genuinely, yeah. I think if we were to rate them, I would say obviously Crescent City. Then I would go Taming Seven, then Funny Story for me. That's how yeah, they rank. I would probably say... Magnolia Parks 3, Funny Story, and then If Only I Told Her. Yeah, that's... I think that's what I'm, I'm so but freaking excited You know what annoyed this. me with this cover, this Emily Henry cover, is that the words are slanted. Is that not yes. bothering you? No, remember we talked about this when she released the cover when I was at your house, yeah. and we were both like, yeah, I don't like how it's, like, slanted. Um, like which, n- none of her other books are slanted. It's really it's something in my brain. It's not, like, uh, enjoying that. No, we'll talk about this cover versus the UK cover in a second. That's a hint for the end of episode oh. fun thing that I have put together um what did you do (laughs) this is you just wait so i don't know what this one's about i think the gist of it is that um roommates right they're ex-fiancés yeah i think it's like an ex and then roommates something like that there's like a few tropes in this one that i'm excited to see her write about but on the cover. No clue. I don't really want to read the synopsis. If I'm gonna be honest with you guys. <laughs> on the cover, the guy's wearing Croc, and there's like a little letter under his stool, and I'm really hoping those are two big storylines. Because like, <laughs> why are you putting Crocs on his feet? <laughs> I love it. If you guys wanted to know, but those are all of the <laughs> um, new releases that are coming out that yeah. we are excited for. Um, there's so many. Like I've never like been to, like so many anticipated reads. In such like a, not a small amount of time, but like I feel like books don't come out like this often, you know? Oh no. Yeah, no, there's like back to back to back to back and I'm so like the, excited. Our TBRs are like written for us at this point. Exactly. Like they're just, everything is out there for us. So mm. those, tell us down below guys, like rank them, tell us down below what you guys are excited for. Let us know all of that. But yes, um, we've already been talking for a long time, so I think we should just go straight into our end of episode fun thing. Okay. So, if you would go to the Notion and go to the very bottom where there's a link, if you would click that for me, that would be amazing. This is so cute. <laughs> so, Aww. Destiny made another presentation, but this one, oh my god, wait, this is so cute. It's UK versus US book covers. Oh my god, with a little, look, I love it. Look at the little scrapbook. So that's the game we're going to be playing today we're just going to be talking about the uk versus us book covers and saying which ones that we like better this is fun i'm excited this is fun okay so let's get straight into it okay i'm ready first first one we have a little life so the left is us the right is uk yes i let i like the uk one better but the right wait but the left one the us one i feel like gives kind of like a foreshadowing 
into how the book makes you feel you know yeah i will say it's just i feel like a nostalgia for the u.s cover but i do like the uk cover because it kind of gives you a glimpse into the apartment and that's like such a big thing for the story yeah so the u.s one is the man crying if you've seen that one the uk one which i don't see i feel like i only ever i know i live in the u.s but like when people post and stuff i feel like i only ever see the u.s one but the uk one is interesting because it's just white but then the letters are cut out and there's a little apartment in the background yeah but i like that i think that's that one's like kind of cool i think i just prefer the u.s one because i don't know maybe it's just because it's the one that i have that i just mm-hmm. whatever it with but i don't know but next up we have the invisible life of Addie larue by v.e schwab and i have to say i think it's i think i did the same thing for all of them the left is the u.s, is US and the right is uk so the us one is just black with the gold writing and then the yeah. uk is like dark blue with these it's flowers. beautiful i love yeah. the uk cover so much more than the us cover yeah the detail on that one is just really really pretty every single time that i see somebody from like the uk hold up the invisible life of Adelie room like you're so lucky <laughs> it's so pretty yeah that one's pretty i like the colors i like the gold yeah. and the blue i love just the vibe the US of it one's too. just a little that's, boring that one's very- yeah. But it's like the stars really connecting is interesting. I mean, that's like kind of cute in the U.S. one, but that's really, that's yeah. really it. Next up, we have Malby Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, okay, so the U.S. one is the normal blue cover with the colorful writing, and the U.K. one has like a waves. Yeah. Like a colorful. I like the U.S. one. I don't really love, I don't think it's the font. Something about the U.K. one I'm not loving. I think I like the U.S. because it also has the the kids like on the surfboards which is like the main yeah i feel like that's what i like the the us one too because like you said of the surf like it it just it means a lot more when you look at it than the other one yeah also it's kind of like i don't know i really like the us one now that i'm staring at it i haven't really looked at the cover this hard before oh i loved i fell in love with malibu rising when i saw the cover i love it so much yeah the cover is really pretty the us cover yes i love that one okay next we have one of us is lying (laughs) Okay. Hate both of them. Just want to let everybody know. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I can't even pick because the US one's just four faces with like, is that notebook paper on them? Yeah. And then the UK one, it just says like one of us is lying, but there's like four students at the top. But I, I think don't I really like, like the UK one better. Yeah, if I were to put one like, or want one of these on my shelf and got to choose, I would pick the UK. I don't really yeah. like those creepy faces or like, it's creepy. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. This one was just interesting because it's like a super popular book talk book. But next yeah. we have If We Were Villains. Ooh, wait, I've never seen these covers. I hope that these aren't both UK. <laughs> <laughs> the one I have is... Just I plain just black. black. Yeah. Okay, so the one on the left, it has a skull. And If We Were Villains is in script. And then the one on the right, there's a dead bird. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest, I think I like the dead bird cover more. <laughs> See, I think I like the skull cover because if I'm not mistaken, this is... a about like a shakespearean thing and the skull uh, with uh is that hamlet or what is the no skull idea. with the shakespeare play there's a certain shakespeare play that has to do with like a skull like they hold the yeah, skull and so i feel sense. like so that's why i like the skull cover better i don't know i do plan on reading if we were villains in like october yeah same so. I feel like this is just like a a fall book next up we yeah, have like beach bird. read nice i have both of them staring at me right now but i love the u.s cover a bajillion times more oh and yeah because I, I that's just like the original like what i've read with it but i feel like i don't know the colors of it the i don't know i don't really like the i don't know what i don't like about the other one the i two just writers like one holiday a rom-com waiting to, like it's giving rom-com the uk one yeah and it's not i it's just not love rom-y. the way that you see like the two of them on the u.s cover like i feel like the u.s cover is iconic i love the u.s cover yeah uh, yeah i like the, i just like the u.s cover better yes okay. next up we have people we meet on vacation this one just grinds my gears because the uk and the u.s titles are just not different the same. and it just <laughs> like what anyway i think i like I kind of love the colors on the UK one because it's pink and blue. Yeah. And I love those colors. But again, I just think the US one is just like I- iconic Emily Hunter yes. cover. It's also, so hard. slanted. Yes. I didn't know that people made on vacation slanted. So maybe I'm wrong on that. But <laughs> yeah, the, the US one is just iconic, I think. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, d- I, I think that too, that I just love the US one as well. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Happy Place by Emily Henry. <sighs> this one's a little hard for me. 
Yeah, me too. Um, I think I like that the U.S. one is all pink. And I like that the whole book is just pink with the characters having yeah. fun. And I like the font that she does on the U.S. ones. Maybe that's what I really like. I don't know. I think I like the U.S. one better. The U.K. one? I do. Yeah. I, I feel like know. I like the U.S. one better, too, because I like in the cover that Wynn and Harriet are looking at each other and you can see all the rest yeah. of the characters that are in the book as well. Yeah. Yeah. The UK one's cute. I just, I don't know. I don't like the font that she uses on the UK ones as yeah, much. Yeah, it's giving like sans serif. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up though, we have Funny Story by Emily Henry. And can I say, oh God, I, I love the UK one. I love the UK one. I haven't seen the UK one. I like that it's more detailed. I like that she's laughing. I like that he's looking at her and it seems like they're yeah. in on a joke together. I love the sunset in the back. I like that you can yeah. see the bar. I like that. The, I just love everything about it. Yeah. I like that one better too, actually, but he's still got his Crocs on. But I feel like this has to be something for the story. I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm going to wait for the Crocs to be a storyline. He point. must she's like, like really like, love Crocs. <laughs> but yeah, I also do. The one. US covers do just hold a special place in my heart. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, next That's up, we nice. have The Hating Game oh, wow. by Sally Thorne. I don't like either of these. No, I don't like either of these covers, but if I were to pick, I would say the UK one because... Oh, really? Yeah, because I feel like you hear about, like, Glass Office, and they've, like, put... Yeah, I feel, like, illustrated true. that, and, like, how their desks are right next to each other. Like, I like how that's Yeah, I shown. feel like the UK one's different because when you see, like, the cartoon covers in person, you think of, like, the US ones. Yeah. Because, like, I feel like the drawing on the UK one's a little different. But yeah. I think I like the U.S. one. I don't know. I really don't like either of these ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be honest. Neither of these covers are really it. But Yeah, I don't know. I would pick the U.K. one, though, if I had to choose. I might pick U.S. I don't know. Um, next up, we have The Midnight Library by Matt. Oh, my God, I haven't seen this U.K. one either. I haven't read this book. You haven't read this book? No, I don't think I, I really... I never really wanted to, I feel like. I read this book in high school and I really liked it. Um, I think... I, oh, I don't so, the US one I like because it has, like, little windows and it's showing, like, different lives, I guess. Yeah. And then, is the UK one, is at the library? And it's yeah. just, like, open it. I like that this is open into, like, the sky and the galaxy. Like, that's kind of yeah. cute. But I Especially think I like after the you US read one. the book, it makes sense why it's open into, like, the galaxy yeah. and stuff. But I do think I like the US one better because it gives a glimpse into, like, kind of what the book's about. Yeah, I like the U.S. one better, too. I yeah, like, I do think I like the U.S. one. Yeah. The, the the U.K. one's giving science fiction for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like that. that. Once Upon okay. a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I l- okay, so I love the black heart, whatever. Is that the U.S. one? Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, the U.S. one's black and the pink one is U.K. Okay, yeah, the U.S. one I like because I like them together because I like how the ballad's like purple and they're kind of the same, yeah. but something about this pink once upon a broken heart with the soldiers and the stars really does it for me like i love the uk i feel like it's just beautiful to look at but also it gives you that vibe that it's a very fairy tale-esque book yeah i feel like you don't get that from the u.s cover yeah i love that i think yeah i think uk on the same thing we have the battle of never after which (laughs) is the um u.s versus uk one the uk one again you have more of the like enchanting yeah cover. it gives more of the fairy tale vibes i feel like that's what i mean i love prettier. the uk covers because it gives the fairy tale vibe yeah i'm with that yeah I, always the uk covers love the uk okay i think it's no not the last one but next one is inheritance, inheritance games. games i do not like the uk i do not like how there's people hate like the, the characters cover. on it I like that they put, like, that's, like, the mansion of them, but I don't like... Yeah. It's kind of, like, giving, like, a... Well, I guess it's, like, a mystery, but, like, murder mystery, who done yeah. it? there's, like, question marks on their faces. But I the like US that one's kind of fun. Well, I like the U.S. ones because, like, you see the candlestick, the necklace, the crown. Like, it all makes sense when you read the yeah. book. Yeah, I like the, the U.S. ones. just And all of them next to each other, the U.S. ones. I really like them. Yeah, I really like the U.S. ones. I hate the U.K. ones. <laughs> next up, we have My Dark Vanessa. Oh, okay. I've never seen the... Does she have red hair? Um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've read that book. These are like complete different aesthetics. Oh, yeah. But I think I like the U.S. one because my dark Vanessa is giving like, well, obviously what the story is, but it's like a heavier book. And yeah. It's a black and white cover. So I feel like that kind of goes with the book. Oh, yeah. That's me, too. I think that I would go with that one because when you read the book, I feel like it goes with the vibe of the book better. Yeah. yeah the right one does not give like what the, book the right about. one's giving like thriller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it kind of is. 
It's yeah, just, I don't. Yeah, the hair is like, is the hair like a big plot point? I have no, I can literally cannot remember why <laughs> the man. I think I like darked this out in my brain. Brian. Okay. Um, okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. Aw, that was so fun. Thank you like, so much. Still, okay, can I click off of this page? Thanks For so that. Much, I had so much fun. Of course. That help, was a help. fun little game. Yeah. And we could do that again because there's so many US versus UK yeah, covers. Next time are. I'll make the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> So if you guys I had want so us much to fun making it. It was so much fun to like put yeah, all the so stuff cute. together. But, but I think I think that's all we have to chat about for today's yeah. episode, guys. Hopefully Lots you guys of book enjoyed. talk. We'll see y'all in the next we'll one. See y'all in the next one. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for all of the above. Um, what else? Do we oh. We have all the links. All the links are usually in the Instagram bio. I put literally everything in there. We post Instagrams when the video goes up. If you want to see a visual, if you don't watch the YouTube. But you could watch the YouTube. It's just bookmarked. Is it bookmarked pod? Bookmarked Um, pod, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's on YouTube. You can watch Spotify, Apple. You can leave us a rating, review. Leave us a five star if you really feel inclined to do so. That would be so kind of you. And I think that's that's all for today. Yeah, that's it. And that's it. And that's it. So, got nothing more to say. Nothing more to say. Could you believe it? (laughs) We'll see you guys. I couldn't. See y'all in the next one. Bye. Bye.